hello everybody welcome back so today we will talk about creating a crud based rest api api using spring boot and jpa so let's see what should our rest api look like so this is the rest api that we are creating we are creating an endpoint known as users where i can go ahead and put my data first name last name and institute and save it so once I do a send, it should be saved. So you can see over here frugal is yada by ty. So this is the dummy data that I have given. So now I should be able to retrieve the users that is present in my database. So these are the four users that is present in my database. And update the user. If I try to update it, it should be able to update it and delete the user. These are the four operations that I can do from my application. So let's get started. So first of all, you need the Spring Boot web dependency as well as the spring data jpa dependency along with that i'm using a database known as mysql so you need to have the mysql connector and then you have to have spring boot maven plugin to run the spring boot application from maven so now let's start and start and create a application so once you have your spring boot application you need to have a main class so this is our main class is going to be I should have a Spring Boot application annotation which tells us that this is a Spring Boot application and this supports this internally calls two three annotations Spring Boot configuration, enable auto configuration and component scan. So the default con component scan will scan the this package only. Mm, so I have added one base package com for release so this will scan only the packages of com.frugalis and under that all the beans that we have it will scan those beans and i have enabled enable jpa repository so this is the annotation that tells us that we should enable jpa repository we have enabled jpa repository in our application so this is the package that is having the repositories so we need to create this package as well and then we have used entity scan to scan for the entities so the, our domain entity so this is the this is the annotation that will scan on the domain entities it is under this package so i have added that package and then create an application so let's get started and create a user bean first because this is the bean that we are going to use more often to transfer the response and request to our service classes so we'll be rising writing one repository class and one service class so service we have the interface over here and then we'll write the service impl to implement a logic for the service classes so before going into this detail you have to do one thing you have to configure the mysql database so you can see over here i have configured mysql database i have given create drop so you need to create one property file application or properties and put this properties under the application file so these are the three different properties for the mysql database and this property hibernate dgl auto tells us that we need to we want to create the database each time our application starts in that case i am using create drop but if you don't want you can use update or if you can remove the properties this property so once you up put it as update so any schema change or any update in the um, uh, domain entity will reflect into your database so now once you have configured this you need to create a repository so i have created a user repository so sorry sorry for that so you have to first create the entity the domain object so this is my domain object that I have created I have given the properties along with that ID and generated value. So this will create a database table known as users in my database. So then you have to configure the repository to access this domain entity object from the database. So I have extended JP repository and given a user and return the type as long. So here I have used two different inter uh, methods. So JPA repository is the interface that is exposed as an API to us, to the developers where they can implement the interface. So the fundamental, uh, what do we say, the advantage of having this repository is that it provides default implementation such as uh, the basic operations such as save, update, delete. All those operations are covered under the JPA repository. So internally what happens is your JPA repository extends the CRUD repository and the CRUD repository extends the uh, repository interface. So this is the hierarchy that JP repository follows. So JP repository is an abstraction over the uh, CRUD repository having some of having lot of extra methods. So 
I have used my own methods find by first username. So what it does is what happens over here is you have to just declare a method and the query corresponding query would be auto generated by Spring JPA. So what happens here is I have used find by first name. So there is a query that gets created in the back end select star from users where first name equals to this first name. So this is how the query gets generated. You can always write your custom query as well in the JQL language. So if you visit my blog, so this is my blog. You can always visit here and see the tutorials or the posts. So here you can write a JQL query like this. So this will be a JQL query custom query. So now once you have written your repository, so once you have written this repository, you need to enable the JP repository annotation. So this is mandatory. Once you have this, then only you can en uh, enable this. You have to write a repository class, then you can use the enable repository. So then we have a service class where you have all the methods for save, get, find, update and delete. And then all the implementation logic is present over here. So what happens over here is I have created a method for save. And what I have done over here is I have created an object of our uh, entity database entity object and then copied the properties from the input user the model the pojo user to the domain user so the idea of having creating two different uh, objects is that i don't want to expose my domain object directly as a response to the user so that's why this level of abstraction is needed so i have used another pojo on his user so then we are doing bin dot copy properties again from out user to the normal user and then returning it. So this will return me an user with the ID. So once I get the ID, I copied that ID to my existing user, IN user, and then returning the IN user. So this is how you can copy properties from one bin to another as well. So this is the logic for getting all the users. You can see over here repositories dot find all. Find all is not implemented in my code, right? But still I can I use find all. That means this is the default method provided by Spring JPA. Similarly, user deposited or save is another method. So now we have find by ID as well. So find by ID is also provided by JPA. So this also you can use. Sorry, find by ID is provided by me. Sorry for that. So find by ID. So this also you can use. And then what I have to up for updation, I have mm, I returned the database user, the domain user, and then check the some of the properties, and then I try to save it. So this is the whole logic. So in your service class, you write the logic and from the service class, you call the repository class, auto add the repository class and use the repository class methods. And then will come the controller. So here, what you need to do is you need to have your mappings. So this is the endpoint that I'm created. So I have post mapping. That means all the post requests will handle by this method. I have get mapping. So all the get ma get requests will be handled by this method. I have another get mapping for you specific users related to an ID. So this is also handled by this method. So once a request comes with a particular user ID with the request known as get type, it will be handled. So you can see where all those annotations internally implements the request mapping annotation that we use in Spring MVC. So this is the same thing. So along with that, I have used response entity, the Spring's response class, and then I have returned an user object. So you can return any type of object over here. You can see in some cases I have returned object. So you can return object as well. So this is how you can do this. So I have used object and then in the response entity I have used not found for if you no user is present. So let's go ahead and test it. So in order to run the application, you can do in two ways. Either go ahead and run is uh, run as Java application or type the command MBN Spring Boot run. So I will use Java application over here. So it will run my application. So it will create and recreate my database. You can see over here. There's no data is present. So once you do a save, so let's say I want to do post. So this is the user I'm posting. So you can see frugal is here when these things comes in the picture. Let's change the name. Yeah, you try to retrieve it. 
you can retrieve all the users try to update it here then you have to mention the id suppose let's say two and the body is something so it updates the user you can see over here it updated the user and you can again go ahead and do a get it will return you the particular user if you want to delete it you can delete it delete it successfully is coming so once you do a get no nothing is found not found is returned so this is the whole application so guys if you have any questions any queries please let me know and please keep liking and subscribing my channel i have very less subscriber i need subscriber and suggestions please put your suggestion in your in, your, in my email or in my blog post so thanks for watching thank you